here is ArcGIS Online standard interface. What I'm going to do now is go through and show you some of the key parts of it and give you concepts that will help you use the rest of their products. Now first, this list that you're looking here, my content, is a list of all of the individual items I have in my account. Items, you can kind of think of them as files, but they're not files. They're little bits of information online. And there's actually two classes of items. One is a class of item which is storing data. You can see those two right here, feature layer hosted in particular. The next class of items are related to a specific application in ArcGIS Online, in this case, the web map, which is this map up here. So that opens in that. And if you had any other items that were part of specific software like Survey123 or dashboards or story maps, they would have items associated with them as well. But the core items, the building blocks of ArcGIS Online are web maps and feature layers. And you can see those two right here. Now you can add new data to ArcGIS Online really easily just by clicking on new item and then literally dragging and dropping items into it. And I'm gonna drop a shape file that's in a zip file and you need to select what's gonna be inside of this and you have different choices of all the different things that it could be. So make sure you select the right type for that shape file. And you'll notice here, it's gonna add this and create a hosted feature layer. So if I go through the process, I name it something, sure, World Cities. And what you can see here is it's actually publishing a service. So in that, it's actually going to duplicate the data from the shape file and publish it into a hosted feature layer. And you can see that it was uh, completed here. Now, there's the little preview of the map of the data. And this data set, you can see in this, this is called the, the item details page, it has all of these different menus at the top here, overview, data, visualization, usage, and settings. And every item in ArcGIS Online will have this view. It's just some might not have data and visualization. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back to content. And let's just go take a look at the web map. If you click on this, that's what it opens up, the item details. And so you can see this just has overview usage and settings, and it has a little map there showing what it is. So content wise, all of these things have an item page with some basic information in it. Now you'll notice it's created two items for this uploaded hosted feature layer, the original shape file, which was in that zip. And then there's also this feature layer hosted. So this one, the feature layer that are hosted, they mean that they're in ArcGIS Online. The view means it's a copy of this. But the feature layers, if I go and view the item details, you can see here it has a name. And that name can be anything you'd like. It doesn't actually need to be unique. Uh, world Cities. This isn't a file name. This is just the name for that item. The actual way ArcGIS Online deals with items to make sure they're unique is this ID. You can see that ID up here in the URL, and you can see it down here in the ID. This ID never changes for an item. It always remains, and it's the, the way you can track a specific item. So this name can be changed at any time. It's not like a file name inside of Windows. The item ID is what you need to, to know. There's also the ability to add a description about the individual item who uploaded it, when, number of times it's been viewed, and you can add a longer description. And in here you can see this has one layer with this map service. The feature layer itself can contain multiple layers with, within it. Typically, you'll have one layer inside of one feature layer. If I go to the data view, you can actually see all the data, and this is all the different world cities as points. and you can see the different information here. So this data can also be edited. You can actually double click on any individual item and make changes. And you can see I can do that. It's editing is disabled, but you have the privilege to edit for this layer. Why? Because you created it. You're the owner of that data. Visualization allows you to change how the data is going to look 
by default. And you can see the default cartography here are these little points. So if you add this to a map, that's how it's going to appear. The usage is just statistics about it. All items have that. And same with settings. All items have settings. But not every item has data and visualization. That's only special for the layers that have data within them. And that's why I'm saying there's two types of classes of, of items. There's those that have data and those that don't. Now, you might be asking, OK, well, what about this shape file that you uploaded? Isn't that data? Well, it is, but it's not data that ArcGIS Online can use. If we go and view the item details on this, and I opened it up in a slightly different way, you can see it doesn't have a data item in here. It does have a download, update, share, but doesn't have any of the other settings that the data did. If I go back to content, look at the web map. So let's look up this web map. You can click on this to bring up the item details page. You can see this has no different settings than the shapefile. So a shapefile is actually treated just as a generic thing. It's not special. And the data for the world cities in this case, this shapefile is actually a, a copied to create this feature layer hosted. So I can delete this shapefile from the account and it won't affect the use of this feature layer. So there you go, it's gone. And if I go back into the world cities, you can see, if I go to the data view here, you can still see all the data are there and I can still go to the visualization and it will still show up fine. So the shapefile itself had no link directly to showing the data in ArcGIS Online. Now, the data itself is inside of this hosted feature layer. Let's try to add it to a map. Now, if I go back to the item details page for this, there's all of these settings and commands I can do. So settings in here, and these are all the different commands I can do associated with this. So I can open it in a map viewer, open it in a scene viewer, that's for 3D. I can open it in ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro. I can also create a view layer, which is a special type of copy of the data. And I can also export the data. And this is the important part. So that shape file that was in ArcGIS Online that I deleted, when I go to export this, it's actually gonna create a new shape file to export. It's not going to create, so let's do this one, shape file. It's not gonna update that old shape file. So what this does is it now copies the data again, this time from ArcGIS Online into the shape file. And this gives me back the settings that I had before to download it, publish it, or update the data. So you can see you can actually convert a hosted feature layer to something you can download. And now you can see I have the world uh, shape, city's shape file. I named it that differently on purpose to make sure it was distinguishable. Because as you can see, you can have items with the same name. The only way to differentiate them really is this item ID. So that's the main part about items. Items themselves are kind of like files, but they're not really files. And there's two classes. There's some that are tied to applications or our other information. And then there's ones that are tied to data stored in ArcGIS Online. And they work very differently. Now, data can also be used in other items. There can be a hierarchy. You can actually have a web map that's referencing, for example, both of these layers. So let's go through and do that. So this world cities, if I go and actually click on the little three dots over here on the side, and I go open in map viewer, what it's going to do is it's going to open the map view and add that data to the map. And you can see it's using that default cartography that was defined inside of it. So this world cities, I can interact with it, I can re, uh, change the, the point data, change the symbology, but I can also add more data. So I can add, I can browse my layers. So my content, and you can see this one, let's add this. And so now we have Canada in it as well. And I can drag this over on top. So now it's showing up the Canada data on top of the world cities data. So the two data sets now are loaded in this single map. But you'll notice it says untitled map and there's other information and there's this little blue dot. The little blue dot means there's an action there. And in this case, I can save this 
combination of those two individual layers in this one web map. And I get to actually save it as a specific name and we'll name this uh, Canada map example and we'll save it in this folder. A tag allows you to save items and add something in it, let's say a project name or something that will help you find that data later. So we'll just go demo and then I can add a summary. I'll save that. And now that it's saved, if I go back into the contents, and you'll notice the contents is missing up here, and that's because it's buried in this menu on the side. It does that to be able to maximize the amount of space that you have for designing a map. But I can go back to content. We'll see a new item has been created, and that item is a web map, and it's the Canada map example. So this web map is inside of my ArcGIS Online account, and it's actually also using the World Cities and the Canada Shapefile ArcGIS Online hosted feature layer. So it's actually using those two. So if I deleted this, it would effectively break this web map. So you have to understand there's a hierarchy of items. So this web, web map is refer referencing those two. If we open up the item details page, you'll actually see that in the list right here. So this web map has two layers in it, which are hosted feature layers. But that reference inside of here is based on the ID and a special URL inside of the data. So you, you could rename these. Let's say if I wanted to name this web map something different or these world cities, that's not going to affect it. You can change that. It's deleting the item itself. And you can also make changes in the data. If you edited some data within these environments, it would also show on the web map. That's the advantage of creating it this way. Live data changes would show up in the web map itself. Inside of ArcGIS Online, you can have many different items and you can share them in different ways. So you can see these icons right here. They are showing me that I'm the only one that can access this item. Like I talked about, there's a hierarchy of these items. So this web map is referencing these two layers. If I made this one that my organization can load it or everyone public, it's gonna warn me that I have to update these two as well. It is because if this is now accessible, and those ones are me only. When they open up the web map, it uses that other item. It's not like it's a copy of it. So basically this web map references this item. So if I open this web map as someone else, it would actually fail to show the world cities and Canada shapefile ArcGIS online layers. Now, one other point, this is the content and here's the map. There's, other applications I'm sure you're familiar with in ArcGIS Online, for example, story maps and dashboards, survey one, two, three, field maps, all of these tools are still available, but you have to think of them as separate applications. So the core components are web maps and data feature layers. So feature layers are added to ArcGIS Online, and then you can roll them up inside of a web map to make them available to other applications. And those other applications can either access a feature layer directly or access a web map to show the data. And that's the purpose of this core part of ArcGIS Online, which you can identify because of the blue bar. There's a whole other side of ArcGIS Online with all of these other applications that you may have access to. And these applications reference a web map, which is a roll up of a whole bunch of hosted feature layers, or can reference a hosted feature layer directly to do things like editing, being able to display it, show information about it. And these other tools like Experience Builder and Living Atlas and, and Quick Capture and Survey12, all of these, they're designed to be able to work in their own little website and then they save a small configuration file in ArcGIS Online. For example, right here, this form is actually survey one, two, three. So the way to think of ArcGIS Online, it has the core parts with the content, which is like a file list, the map, which allows you to actually create uh, a whole bunch of layers together 
and roll them up in a nice designed cartographic representation. And then you use those in the various applications that you want to publish something with. So understanding that concept will help you really get how ArcGIS Online works and how to navigate it.